All right, hello, and welcome to Novel Connections. Would you love this book like I do? Here with Zavi and Jeremy. And this week's uh, Wreck Me Reads is American Gods by Neil Gaiman. Um, it is the first time I'm recommending a book, and the narration has a full cast, so there's a ton of people. Uh, I was having trouble like finding the actual list, but when and you listen to audiobook, you can tell it's like they have a ton of people on there. So oh, that sounds that's so a neat fun. Note. This is the one time I'm like I should have listened to it. <laughs> <laughs> the audiobook is good. It's very good. So I'm gonna start off with a no spoilers sort of overview of like mm -hmm. this book. Yeah, this um, is how you tried to wreck me right you gotta mm -hmm, wreck me with this, mm -hmm. so. um a little bit so i was recommending this book because we had read some like low-key uh mystery rooted in real world grounded novels like that was what repo man was and i felt like because of that you would also like uh american gods which admittedly has a little bit more obvious like <laughs> fantasy aspects <laughs> um super fantasy Yes. <laughs> no, it's not. Okay, but I was thinking about this beforehand, and I was like, you know what? To me, and I wrote this down, American Gods is like a modern-day American creation story in a world in which God is dead. So it's kind of like building up the modern-day America that we have today. Like, you know, as a melting pot, like, this mm. is what makes sort of the culture of America. Um, but when the creation story of that melting pot was kind of made... And, and you look at it from God is dead sort of perspective, like it, it, that's what this book feels like to me. And it makes me so excited because it takes the sort of spirituality of people coming from everywhere and mm -hmm. it blends it up in sort of this relatively grounded, like, like there's not some big man in the sky. It's like, there's a whole bunch of mess and we have to kind of cobble it together. And for that, I think it is beautiful. Mm. Okay, so there's four parts to the novel. Yes. We're going to break up the our podcast into four parts following the book design. So I have notes over the first part that we have just finished reading. Mm -hmm. And Jeremy is going to give me a two minute timer like I torture him with. <laughs> and Gosh. I my notes uh, are just pictures because I fucking doodle when I make notes. So yeah, so this is part one called Shadows of American mm -hmm. Gods. All right, ready? No. <laughs> yeah, never ready. And begin. Okay, Shadow is in prison. He's married. He's about to get out of prison. He gets a call. His wife is dead. Uh, he goes, gets out, let out a couple days early, goes back to the hometown where he was living with his wife. Um, he has a dream about a huge buffalo guy. Um, meets Wednesday on a plane who's like, hey, you want to work for me? It's like, no, I got a job. But he's like, no, you don't. That other guy's dead too. Um, it, it snaps away at some point to the lust scene, which <sighs> some dude gets eaten while having sex, uh, by said woman he's having sex with, which is great. Um, he goes to his wife's uh, cemetery, she's getting buried, whatever. Um, finds out that the dude friend he was going to work for was in the car with his wife and they had been sleeping together. He... Decides to work for Wednesday, meets a tech boy who gets, he gets get kidnapped by slightly. Um, he has weird dreams That's all over minute, the place. by the way. <laughs> God <laughs> is dead. Uh, every hour wounds, the last one kills. He meets his wife again, Laura Moon, who comes back as some fucking dead chick after he, Wednesday gives her a coin that he got from uh, the leprechaun dude, Mad mm -hmm. Sweeney. There's some snippets to coming to America stories where you see how gods got to America. They go to Chicago. They meet a couple of witches in a freaking tower. Um, he gets given another coin by this, like, uh, night lady person. Mm -hmm. There's a hammer. He makes a deal over checkers. He's supposed to get his head beat in at some point. Indians yeah. get hung by settlers. Then there's more creation stories where old ladies are putting out that, milk. Those are Vikings. They, they they hung one Indian and the Vikings did that to... Oh, to, yeah, Odin. for the gods, yeah. for the gods. But then the ladies uh, like putting milk out places because um, she's yeah. trying to like worship the, you know, the fairies and, and whatnot. Two minutes. Oh, fuck, I was almost <laughs> done. But you interrupted me. You totally interrupted me. Yeah, I'll give you, I'll give you um, more time. Go. So they go rob a bank and then they go ride a Ferris wheel in which uh, Shadow sees a the real. 
Uh, yeah, the carousel in which Shadow sees the real shape of a lot of the gods. Mr. Nancy is one of my favorite characters. Um, they see that Wednesday is basically Odin. They go have a dinner party. Shadow gets kidnapped again and then gets freed by his dead wife. He has, uh, threatened to have sex with Lucy from the TV. Sticks and stones are the ones that, uh, kill, no, kidnap him, uh, which Laura kills. And then he goes and works at a... Uh, a cemetery, a dead person's whatever, and um, somebody dies. Oh yeah, Mad Sweeney dies, and there's some pyramids. I don't know. <laughs> and now it's three minutes. Okay. So okay, I almost it, it made was it. stone was and wood, and they yeah. were from a three-letter agency that no one said yet. Yeah, yeah. yeah. They made fun of the CIA, so they don't think it's mm-hmm. CIA. No, and they not. beat him up. <laughs> they beat up Shadow. And then Laura me. came and killed a lot of people to, um, <laughs> to bust him out. Yeah, um, so uh, it is your turn. Tell me, as a first-time reader, <laughs> what you think of this book. Okay, so it started off in prison, and that was like, an, like a, okay, it's a definitely like a big guy in prison kind of vibe, and just about like the, in, the people you meet, keeping your head down kind of thing. That was understandable, right? I've seen that depicted enough times. The lust scene immediately afterwards, that was when I was like, what? <laughs> I felt the exact same way when I read this for the first time. Because I was recommended this book by so many people, by uh-huh. like so many people. And they're like, oh, it's a really good book. And I started reading that and I was like, what ungodly nonsense is going yeah, on here? Yeah, I was. it was definitely jarring, but... In a sense where, like, I wanted to read to find, like, to try to figure out what the hell is happening, but it was really cool that that happened. If that makes any sense, like, just to keep like the shifts going because it's not technically its own chapter. It's within. It's like the end part of a chapter. All these flashbacks or like somewhere in America coming to America. Like all these things are at are at the end of chapters, and they're just helping educate the reader of like this world that's still around or the the world that's always been there right we just not everyone's privy to it so that was cool because it's like letting us in on some more insight i feel like shadow took way too long to believe in anything (laughs) like literal crazy things are happening in front of him and he was like how'd you do that (laughs) it was so so that i was like "Uh, uh, come on i liked like all the different like religions especially what's his name uh Chernobyl, the guy who does the hammer to oh, kill yeah, yeah. the the cows from and Russia. Food. Yeah, it's it's a it's a that name is so. This is gonna sound this this is a bit of my nerdiness coming out. So there's this game called Smite. It's a MOBA, and you play as gods and goddesses and devils and demons and crazy things. And so he's mm-hmm. one of the characters. That's how I I recognize that name. What? Uh, so all the gods in America, they're just like weakened versions of what their former selves were. Like they're they're a new mm-hmm. incarnation in America. But since no one believes in them like they did in the homelands, that they're just weakened, diminished versions, which is crazy. So that's a really fun concept that they're pl- that they're going with and they're playing with it. Uh, and so, yeah, so th- as a first time reader, that was really fun to see because they, they don't blatantly say these things. Right. Like they, they talk like if they're timeless, which is great. Right. It shows how Mm -hmm. ancient they actually are. And then they just know things. They just oh, everyone knows everything about Shadow. It's crazy. (laughs) So that's I was like and like and and because everyone knew everything about Shadow, I thought it was so weird that he didn't start like thinking this is odd. I'm in a weird. I loved it, though, because when I read it the first time, I was really I could embody what Shadow was feeling like it took me a while almost as long as it took shadow for to to really like is this where they're going with the story like there isn't some some other trick they're pulling here or something they're gonna be like oh jk or like it's actually way more low-key or whatever so it took me a minute too i was it was about the like um the ferris wheel not the ferris wheel the carousel scene where they're going around and he's like really starting to see these shapes and stuff where i'm like oh yeah okay all of this is like like exactly yeah. oh, what they see, were saying he sees their form that they present he sees their yeah. actual form and then he sees a form he could barely comprehend like there's it's three of yeah. everyone which is crazy 
it and then was Anansi's beautiful. story, which was hilarious, uh, about the yeah, tiger. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah. Um, and that was funny because Anansi, you know, like a trickster god from Africa, and mm-hmm. like all those. Like I, I thought I told you no stories. You call that a story? <laughs> he's like, he's like, I've just cleared my throat. I was like, damn, that's <laughs> sick. Uh, yeah. Yeah, just like yeah. how things play and stuff. It was very fun. I don't know. So he took way, way too long to believe. And I guess that, but that's probably why they're so weak, right? Because technically, Americans, we only believe in America and like all our, you know, freedom, democracy, all that fun stuff. So it's mm-hmm. cool to see that there is the other, the new age gods, like technology, the TV. Yeah. I fucking uh, love it. So yeah. much, and Lucy, who he, he, <laughs> when he said that he she was just asked to like flash him. She didn't she didn't say about having sex with Lucy. <laughs> so you made well, that yeah, sound way she's crazier. Like, she's like, hey, have you ever seen? Do you ever want to see Lucy's tits? That's all she said. <laughs> she didn't. She yeah, wasn't. And it wasn't then about the TV sex. times out, and uh, yeah. and he he says something about like no. Not really. He goes, nope. <laughs> and he goes to sleep, which is crazy. Yeah. Uh, and then there's that. another part where the TV was on and the news anchor like winked at him. To ju- It was just like it was like subtle things mm-hmm. of like that they're always there. And then the fact that the agent government agency knew about it was crazy as well, which makes sense, right? Like, I guess if these people are alive long enough and then these agencies come up long enough, it's crazy that, you know, no one's hunting down Shadow. <laughs> so obviously it's the super hush things. But yeah, I also love the traveling. Like, it sounds dumb in a sense, but like just him traveling, the the little hitchhiker chick that he picked up mm-hmm. sounded so like you. <laughs> just like hippie, let's go What did it. you say? She sounded like you. you. Sound, it sounded like me. Yeah, absolutely not. That's outrageous. He was like, like, "Yeah, oh, you I'm probably going. like work with metal or something." He's like, "What are you saying?" I don't know. Oh yeah, that yes, that made bust. Mm-hmm. I think that's what it was. Yeah, because he was like, he was keying into some of his stuff where he could like. It's almost like he could manipulate, or that he was tapping into something that was like in actuality what existed. Yes, that that that's actually a fun thing. So yes, because Wednesday tells him to imagine the stuff, and mm-hmm. then uh, he imagines the, the snow, and then he tells him to stop because because Wednesday could read his mind apparently. And that's happened several times. And Shadow's just like, sure, you know exactly what I'm thinking. That's a weird coincidence. He didn't read his mind. He did. He said, stop. Th- oh, he could stop thinking about snow now. That That's that's enough. Like, yeah. like, it's, like he it's knows he when he's like, thinking it, things. Well, he, he was saying is like, there's probably enough. You don't want to snow in you the town or down. something. Because yeah. cause they looked out the window. The next like part, Shadow looked out the window and it was this huge, snowy, full cloud that was like rolling in. So mm-hmm. I assumed that um, Wednesday just looked off in the distance and was like, all right, that's probably enough, buddy. That that sucker is going <laughs> to like rain down. That's what you He's literally real- reading his mind yeah. every no, single step. No, he's not step. reading the minds. He he's is. not that strong. Come on. Every, I, I don't, I don't, every time I Shadow think talks. this and, is way more no. magical oh my gosh. I than s- I think it is. Hold on. <laughs> no, they're, they're, I got I to gotta find a part. There's times where they talk. Like Wednesday thinks to himself, even Sweeney, even Chernobyl and, and the, the other three muses or three fates, whatever they are. I don't know what they are. They're yeah. other three entities. They're fucking in your head, man. They, they, they're they always in his head. Uh, she gives him the moon coin, which I thought mm-hmm. was so cool. Um, well, okay. So here's, here's my proposal to that, though. Uh-huh. I think it's more that because gods are created from what we believe in, what we think, that as people in America, we have some intrinsic unconscious control over the gods. So it's not necessarily that they know what an individual is thinking, but they are almost uh, unwillingly bound to kind of act within the parameters that we expect them to Mm -hmm. act in. So he's thinking about the coin, right? Mm -hmm. Theoretically. Or, or has ties to these coins and she as a god who has some relation to that and is affected by like his thoughts and beliefs has sort of the intuition to be like I know you lost a coin no Here's she says specifically don't give this one away because yeah, he, yeah. he knows because she knows he put it in the grave yeah I'm just saying I think it's more complicated than just being able to read minds They're... I don't think it's a reading mind kind of thing well, they just they just have this omnipotence to them, 
and it shows because they're literally bit. saying the things that he does. Yeah, like they're like they still have to go through motions. They still they still are physical to a sense, right? But mm-hmm. they still have this unworldly knowledge about everything. Like everyone knew, like oh, sorry about your wife. Sorry about the, like sorry about the, like everyone knew the whole time. The whole everything we know as a reader, they knew. <laughs> so I think that's the thing. Yeah. But also, there's been hints that Shadow himself has. So the my background theory this whole time, right? Because I this is my first time <laughs> reading the book, so obviously I could be completely wrong. But my whole background theory is that Shadow himself is an entity, is somehow a god who forgot he's a god. Because he's able to manipulate, mm. he's able to, you know, his thoughts have weight to them. That's why Wednesday counts on him. That's why Wednesday found him. Because he he's gathering up all the gods and of course, and he needs someone to drive him around and to be a bodyguard. So why would you not have another god to protect you? Why would you why would you trust a mortal to protect you, right? So I so mm. that that's one part. That and the an other part interesting thought. The other part is he how he conveys and I think he brought what's her name back from the dead by accident and then he talked to matt sweeney when he was dead i think shadow is some form of like either a death god or some form of a god that can uh that has control like over darkness the mad sweeney thing i think was more of just a relation to mad sweeney because yes yeah i I can't take the way that gods die is i don't think a like whoop they're dead right Mm -hmm. like it was it was mad sweeney had been suffering and obviously continuing to suffer Mm -hmm. and um he was a wreck the first time he showed up in this the book and and even more of a wreck like the last time Mm -hmm. and so i think when he died right that was his death but in a heightened sort of celebration of his life he was able to like embody some of the belief that he had been able to just barely hold on to so i think i think the mad sweeney thing was definitely just an aspect of how gods die but it it does tie back into sort of the magic of this universe and how much i love its lack of explicity so it's like None of it makes sense. It's no, like, yeah. It just like, kind of the, happens. Exactly. These are all things <laughs> happening whether you know that it is happening, whether you believe that it's happening. It's it's a thing, like no matter what. <laughs> yeah, mm-hmm. I love that. So that there's a little like hints here and there about how like especially when it talks about like like he's like, oh, why did I say that? Like he's like, I wasn't I didn't mean to say those words, but that's just what came out. He's like, oh, no, I can't mm-hmm. stop talking now. Like his internal monologues betraying the things he's actually saying a lot of the time. And I mm-hmm. think because of he's in the, these presence of the gods and stuff, obviously, they're able to like have like sway over the tones and like of their little domains and stuff, which I thought was really cool. But yeah, just from this first part, Laura being back and being like just cold and dead and like has like almost like she has no soul or no emotions like that's crazy yeah and then all these other tales like when the coming to america story where it's like a djinn or some form of like yes some entity fire demon thing. yeah some fire demon fire uh yeah i think it's a djinn yeah and then how it, like it trapped him to like switch places with him and stuff like that yeah and then that's crazy and then the the lady and then yeah it's just these tales and these like these stories which help it's just it's so weird that like we know it as a reader but shadow doesn't know these things he's just like oh i got kidnapped again oh i'm doing here oh <laughs> it's just like he's just like a leaf in the wind and it's crazy so for the next parts i'm excited to see when he actually goes toe-to-toe with some of these gods or if he does have powers of his own that's either granted or somehow like quietly there it had it talked a bit about his childhood how he was picked on a lot and then how he grew up and like he finally hit puberty mm-hmm. and was bigger than them and that everyone thought he was big and dumb but and not laura and then they, that was just like a small hint of like that's why they're they were together for so long and stuff like that which is mm-hmm. adorable but she's dead and cheated on him and there's a lot of like there's a lot of weight to like all these things even though it's very subtle and maybe not direct a lot of indirect things is what this book what this first part's all about and yeah, yeah. i knew wednesday so- was a god of I just didn't know he was embodiment of Odin, <laughs> which was crazy. It's I was like, so cool. I was like, that's cool. But they, and then the whole meat thing, making their deal. Uh, he had to drink mm-hmm. meat three times and promise. Yeah. And then he wanted Mad Sweeney to fight him, to test him. And then I, Mad Sweeney gave him the coin, but he gave him the wrong coin. And that's why he died. And I was like, this is so weird. <laughs> I, was, I, was, I was like. Because it's all about these like weird old traditions, right? Mm-hmm. 
Yes. And so, like, every time you think it's going to tie back into, like, some, you know, unfathomable, like, thought, it just ties back into, like, old stories that you've heard about from somewhere. Mm-hmm. It's like drinking mead as a way to, like, seal deals was something, like, I feel like I've heard through my brother through oh, yeah. the weird mythology shit that he read about, right? So it's mm-hmm. like all of this ties strangely back into these like simple sort of sort of mythological nuances that a lot of people practiced and uh, yeah yeah. i like that yeah absolutely with the caretakers mr nancy and mr nancy of the world yeah and then bast is the cat who he has sex with in his dream not he didn't have sex with a cat he had sex with a person the goddess who is (laughs) a cat normally because then they they talk about someone else they talk because these are egyptian gods or the, of the Nile, what that they say for themselves. Uh, Bast is uh, a, a cat goddess. Jacko, I think, is Anubis. He helps with the death, and so does Mr. Nancy. They're, I, th- I think they say what gods they are. And he says Set is just running around. Set's this crocodile god from Egypt. I think it's like a god with like a, the head of a crocodile. Or is that the wrong one? Anyways, he says one of them is just an animal, <laughs> like a falcon. That, that he just chooses not to and just eats roadkill and like crazy thing. I was like, it's crazy like how these gods like, have just whoops. diminished. And yeah, so the people who brought them over with their thoughts and stuff and like worship and brought them with worship to America. And it's like they're still bound by the old lands, like uh, the home, their homelands rules, right? Because that's what they brought them over and then still believe that. But then they just either got killed or they didn't, they stopped believing in this and that. That's why they're, that Wednesday still had to do the mead to lock the deal and stuff like that. It was mm-hmm. funny that he hated mead himself, though, <laughs> and then so did Matt Sweeney. <laughs> well, one of my favorite scenes in the freaking book was when he met one of the the uh, crows, and he's like, hey, yes. say never more. And he was like, fuck you. <laughs> yes, that, that, I was definitely going to bring that up. Like, fuck <laughs> you. <laughs> That's, I just heard that tone. It was great. But yeah, so uh, was... what, would you, what would you say is, like, the one initial hook that got you like interested you seem like you like the book which is nice um and what <laughs> yeah. are you looking at for the future resolutions so i think what got me was the descriptions and the writing when they're talking about these like unfathomable fantastical like dimensions and on uh, things that can't are hard to perceive like of the carousel that w- that was a crazy part because it felt like otherworldly. It would be cool if like there was more eldritch horror kind of stuff, right? Because technically those are gods and goddesses, goddesses as well, right? Like some Cthulhu shit. That that's just me because I love mm-hmm. that shit because I because I think I fucks with you know Lovecraft and whatnot. But yeah, it's a lot of the writing that's been getting me. So because Shadow, like, eh, take it or leave him as a character. He doesn't like it. Hasn't like really strike i like some of his convictions and some of his like um like his character right like as far as like helping the person uh with the road trip helping um being kind to what was her name mrs goodwill or something like when he worked briefly at the funeral home like just little Mm. things here Mm. and there um so like like he seems cool but i just like the other character seems so much cooler. <laughs> he just seems like, oh, I, I don't know what's happening. Oh, no, I'm kidnapped again. It was just, it's just like a lot of like, <laughs> he just doesn't seem like if he's fu- once he's fully in, I think it'll be a fun take, especially if he does have his own powers or if he does have his own um, weight to everything. Because he's still like on this fringe, this outer edge of knowing what's actually happening. Uh, it's a lot because Wednesday is like mm-hmm. keeping him in the dark, but Wednesday's just been honest this whole time he's like no i am a hustler i am this right he's like so it's just shadow's not yeah. asking enough questions or shadow's not ready to hear certain things uh i freaking love yeah, wednesday I, he's such an asshole yeah. but i love him oh yeah he's great like his whole deal just either hustling or either like just knowing these things and and how he talks about like the old times i want to see him in actual action because yeah it was just, it's just like we were so close to things and then he gets kidnapped and we we're so close and then he gets kidnapped. like it was it was just he got kidnapped twice right one was just briefly by the god of technology and then one was by mm-hmm. uh, stone and wood mm-hmm. and it was just i, ah, I don't know it, it's on the cusp it's fun 
right? I'm, I'm reading it. It was, but it was just like, if, if it wasn't for those little stories here and there, right, to make it the book richer, right? Like the coming to America, the somewhere in America's, I think you, I think I would be like, okay, because <laughs> if Shadow just dies and really? the story continues, I would be like, sure. <laughs> like, I don't have a deep connection to Shadow. Yeah. At first I was like upset because his wife died in the car crash. And then you learn about like how they died. Like, oh crap. And then she comes back anyways. And mm-hmm. it's just, just technically tormenting him. Which I thought he brought her back. Because they haven't explained it. And even like the other, the gods who were working at the funeral home. They're like, no, the dead. It's really strong to bring someone back. He's like, zombies are yeah. easy because they're yeah. living. But brainwashed and this and that. So that's why I think Shadow also had powers. Because he brought Laura back. Either either the coin that he was given because it had its power. Or because it was for a king or whatever. Brought her back. Or that he brought her back somehow. Like to keep her in his life. So I was definitely interested to find out answers to what the hell is going on yeah so i feel like once the book starts picking up that traction like they have a goal for something obviously they're just it's they keep saying a storm's coming Mm -hmm. it sounds like there's going to be a fight right with new age and old age gods and that sounds dope so i'm excited for what could happen (laughs) even though i don't know what's gonna happen right so that's why mm-hmm. I'm like, yeah, I'll keep reading. Also because of the <laughs> podcast, but mostly, I mean, mostly because of the podcast. But yeah, so the book's fun. I want more. <laughs> I want more and better. <laughs> that's good to know. It is kind of funny that you mentioned that the like coming to America stories are what keeps it sort of interesting for you. Because mm-hmm. those, um, especially on the first we read, I was like, yeah. Why the hell are why why is this in here? I think it was the um the one with the Vikings coming over. I yeah. that one I felt was like not irrelevant, but I I I almost got bored like reading. That, that was one part. of the shorter like, ones. Meh. Yeah, but you realize why either that could be Wednesday's or- origin story, right? Because they hung a guy because Odin's the god of the gallows and stuff like that, and mm-hmm. so they so that could be how Wednesday got embedded into America. But it's definitely to show that Vikings were here, and that's why Norse gods could be here as well. So that would be crazy if that's le- legitimately how Wednesday himself got there, and then he's just been around ever since, you know. Especially, like, especially since the, those Vikings got killed right away. So the only right. thing they believed in was uh, they talked about Thor, the Thunderer was there, and they talked about they gave the mm-hmm. sacrifice to Odin. I want to see some yeah, like, it is Native so crazy. American gods and stuff like that. That's what I want to see. Some <laughs> some spirits and stuff. Because obviously, you know, they've been around for a while. And I, it would make sense that well, they're diminished too, just because of all the reservations and, you know, the yeah, corralling yeah. that happened to them. Um, so Well, they, they make like one side comment about how Jesus is like really powerful in America. Yeah, even though it like is he, like he home out. country he's not as powerful and i'm like yes. i want to meet jesus that would be so fucking hilarious <laughs> um yeah, yeah they said that, like, so, they saw him hitchhiking and no one just... picked him up over there i thought that was so funny yeah <laughs> Yeah, yeah. This, yeah. Like, it would, it would it be makes fun me think to about see... how many other gods exist. Yeah, especially just because we're this huge melting pot, like you said in the beginning, and everyone bringing these beliefs, even of like pixies and like tricksters and like the little things, right? So like leprechauns, right? For instance, even something as silly like a jackalope, right? <laughs> or uh, chupacabra, you know? Like I th- these like cryptids, right? Even the cryptids, they they could be around. So like, what if Bigfoot's mm-hmm. not real, right? But people believed enough in him that it it manifested him. So I thought that was like a fun take mm-hmm. on it all. Yeah. Yes, I would like to see cryptids and other creepy stuff. I think that'd be fun. Especially like how unique of a take Neo uh, Gaiman's like showing, Neo right? Gaiman. Like the leprechaun super tall, how yeah. like how Wednesday, even though he has, he has, because Odin has the, the all-seeing eye and uh, how he, one of mm-hmm. his eyes is a glass eye, right? And just like, just like these unique takes on the, the stories that we've heard of or know of is old mythology so i would like to see like other like the interpretations of these things so like how technology was like this acne ridden like teenager and stuff like that um the tv <laughs> is like could just be anything and like manipulate through the, the screen i thought that was cool so there's definitely like other gods and goddesses that like are on like are there and i would like i'm sure once the storm happens the confrontation between the two would we'll definitely see a lot more and i'm excited for you know later in the book even though part one is a third of the fucking book so that just means either things have to ramp up real fast for the end because we're like because this was a lot of the book and i was like and nothing really happened <laughs> it was <laughs> Like so, even though the they travel portions to were some fun, people. that was mostly it. They just talked to a lot of people. 
Yeah, they said the they, they, they of set, all the characters. I hope that wasn't all the characters. <laughs> they were just like, <laughs> I was like, okay, it's it's a fun book. It's a it's a good read. It's just uh, I hope. It's been an, it's a steady incline, not like this weird like dips and high and like so we like some of the highs were already passed. But the writing's really mm. well done. Like the descriptions of things, the like the descriptors, the the imagery, like all his like similes and stuff like that. And quotes and stuff at the beginning are also really really well and how they tie into like a chapter or like of how things are believed or perceived. And then yeah, um, I love the, that. Uh, the hours kill the last one. No. What was it about the hours? Can you yeah, say that one every again? hour wounds, the last one kills. And Absence. then the other quote that I have written down is, call no man happy until he is dead. It's like, yeah. those are some good ass quotes. Damn. Oh yeah, it was really good stuff. Hmm. And then the other one was uh, the bottle of Jameson Irish whiskey, the $20 ticket out of here. Was yeah. Like, that, was, that was pretty cool. And then, and then the stories, like, there's a lot of, I, if the writing was bad, it would be hard to, like, push through this story. But the writing's really <laughs> good. And the imagery and the description's really good. And that's what's coasting this. And so once, like, actual f- fighting between gods starts happening, that sounds sick. So let's just, it's a lot of me, like, okay, <laughs> this means this is happening later, right? Nice. Well, I'm glad you were not completely bored. Not and looking to see what else is going on in the story. And I think that is good for now. We'll get into yeah. the meat, the second of four sections. Hopefully yes, there's some more things two. to keep your interest. Part two. Yeah. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And we will join back in the podcast realm then, at which point we will discuss it and see if you are still waiting for shit to happen or if you are satisfied oh my with gosh. some uh, If it just teases action. me the whole book. You, <laughs> there's no sequels, right? It's just this book. <laughs> I think it's just that book, yeah. He's got a lot of okay. other writing, though, so. Mm-hmm. <laughs> well, 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 our special <laughs> guest next week is the god of podcasting. I think it's a goddess. Is it a goddess? Hey. Something like that. <laughs> uh, but yeah, that's a that great question. Cool. Yeah, I'm, lo- I'm eager for the good stuff. <laughs> Catch you on the flip side. Yes, catch you on the flip side.